Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. We have something new for you today. We are going to start doing a few gear reviews and the first one we have here is a bicycle rack. Let's go ahead and get into it. What we have here is a Sanhima bicycle rack and this is a four position rack. This is how it came. It does include a anti-rattle wedge and we'll show you how to put that on. And there's also this, which you use as a hitch pin, but on many of them, they're actually threaded inside, and so it will tighten it down. In the case of this Sanhima, this is more of just a safety device. You can use a regular hitch pin or a locking hitch pin if you want, because it doesn't have any anti-rattle features in that. Some straps for it, and the main piece here, and it comes pre-assembled. Get you a close-up on there. The Sanhima, and it says, live the peak, conquer the Everest. This was sent to me by Vic Off-Road from Australia, although they now have offices in the United States as well, so they're trying to expand their United States network, and so that's part of why they sent this to me to try and get their name out there a bit. So check out the link below. There's a link directly to this and to Vic Off-Road's page. And they have plenty of things, light bars, traction boards, bike racks, some solar equipment, and a few other things. Let's go ahead and see how easy this is to install. I'm learning about this at the same time as you are. I did read a tiny bit about it online and it has these two levers here. So this bottom lever is for the tube right there that goes in your receiver. Just rotate that forward, and now we can drop it down. And now it's in the position to go in the receiver. Easy enough there. And then there's a second lever on the back that you simply lift up as well. It's a little bit tight right now, see if we can get it to unlock. Super easy to adjust that way. The bolt used to secure it in place as a hitch pin requires a 24 millimeter wrench or even a couple of end wrenches or adjustable crescent wrenches, whatever. And this does have a little bit of a nylock insert, so you can't hand tighten it, which adds a little bit of security to it. But if you were really worried, you would probably just get a locking hitch pin. So you can put that on there and tighten it down on the other side. Now, that does not prevent it from rattling, so it's still going to rattle. And that's where this other piece comes into play. This anti-rattle device installs super easy. Drop the U-portion over the top, put this one underneath, just like that, and then you have a washer. A lock washer which is just a split washer and then the nut and this can be installed using either a 17 millimeter or an 11 16 so I'm just gonna hand tighten that now so I can put the other side on all right so it requires a deep socket on this particular receiver probably on most actually and get my ratchet going the right way Tighten those down evenly. If you tighten down one side too much, it may not sit even. And you can see here that this one's actually hitting on the chain loop. That's okay. You're not putting a ton of pressure on this, but in other vehicles, these loops will be out of the way. Just make it fit however you need to on your vehicle. And you can see it's pretty much shaking the whole vehicle. Let's go ahead and load a bike onto it now. Here we have my Trek mountain bike. And this carrier is designed for up to four bikes, but that would be a little bit tough with full size ones. And it does have grooves. I'll give you a close up here. It does have grooves on these mounts to allow for your cables and stuff to sit in there without getting pinched. So you can see how the straps work here. Simply a Velcro strap and you can pull it out, adjust it as needed. And there are 
these grooves in here to let your cables, whatever you have hanging down, sit in those slots to keep it safe, keep it from getting damaged. And then you also have two slots here. So you can either go in the front one or the back one, depending on how you need to for your particular bike. And once you get that through, these things on the other side, buckles are super easy to use. Just go under that, over that, and Velcro it down and you're set. If you want to lower it down to get into the rear hatch of this 2022 Nissan Pathfinder, simply pull this lever, the bottom one, and then we'll angle down 45 degrees and stop right there. So it holds itself in position there. And now there's enough clearance for the hatch to open. Keep in mind, this is the closest position to the back of the vehicle. So you should be clear. This is a 29 inch tire turned sideways and it still has enough clearance to clear the rear hatch. The package also came with eight of these straps. And you can use these straps for whatever you need. If you need to tie off the wheel to keep it from spinning, you can do that. Or if you need to tie the bikes a certain way, tie the pedals so they don't rub into sensitive areas, the gearboxes, derailers, whatever, brakes, you can use these to tie things off so that they don't mix together. And there's two for each bike. So one for the front wheel, one for the rear wheel on each of the four bikes. With the bikes unloaded, you can raise this handle and lock that down out of the way. That way when you're on vacation or whatever, you don't have a place to store it in your garage, you can leave it here on the back of the vehicle and still lower it as needed to get out of the hatch. While I didn't get any footage of it, I did do some driving and the rack felt very secure. I have tested a few different types of this same style of bike rack and this one was actually my favorite. It's the easiest to adjust and with that anti-rattle device, it's really, really secure. You don't feel it wobbling or anything in the back. It's also rated to hold 160 pounds. Just for reference, that track I had on there weighs about 32 pounds. So plenty of capacity for four bikes if you have two adults and two kids. It is a little tight if you're going to try and fit four adult bikes on there, but it can be done. Just got to be careful of where the pedals and everything line up so you're not damaging spokes or brakes or whatever. This is what it looks like when it's fully extended, but when you collapse it down, it's about 6 inches deep, 12 and a half inches wide, and 32 and a half inches tall, and it lays flat so it sits nicely on the floor or a shelf or something like that. Pretty easy to store. This Sanhima bicycle rack for position runs about $165, $170. And if you want to pick one up, be sure to click the link down below in the description and that'll take you right to it. And thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this Sanhima bicycle rack. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications and give me a thumbs up and be sure to comment down below. There are many different styles of bike racks. These ones are generally the less expensive ones. They're a little more compact, easier to use. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.